planetary amulet patterns of the Hebrew Gematria number squares. These date back to the golden era of Greece, contemporary to the later Babylonian captivity and repopulation by the earliest diaspora Hebrews to return from Babylonian slavery toward Palestine. Therefore, it is more than likely the related talismanic figures of the seven camia and seven sigils of the archangels date from at least as late as this era as well and originated in Greece as much as the Hebrew Gematria number squares amulets originated in Babylon and Palestine. The implication of these amulets and talismans is that the knowledge of the seven camia and seven archangel sigils extends back prehistorically beyond even the Gnostics of 2,000 years ago. When we depict the same pattern as that which we can derive by astrology as the seven planets ruling over the twelve zodiac signs using the sigils of the archangels in red and the cameo talismanic figures in green, we find the same pattern can be formed from the latter as the former and the latter preceded the former by no fewer than 500 years. Of course, when we subtract all these ancient forms of symbolism from the simplest format to modern understanding of this system, using the seven visible planets as rulers between the twelve zodiac signs of modern astrology, we can understand the truth behind all the intervening aeons of obfuscation by the various religious faiths of the eras. First, around 500 BC, the seven cameo talismans and the seven archangel sigils became the seven number squares, amulets, and the twelve aeons. By the time of the events described in the Gospels, the Gnostics, including the real Jesus himself, understood these same concepts as the seven powers of twelve archons. And now we can sum them all up simply by the shorthand symbols for the twelve signs of the Babylonian zodiac and the seven Olympic planets by simple application of astrology. Let us turn our attention now to studying the Gnostic models from 2,000 years before now to better understand the nature of the soul as it existed according to the students of Kabbalah during the era of the New Testament. We see here again an epitome of the Gnostic mythos described in the hypostasis of the archons, meaning the origin of our authority, or, more precisely, the source of our right to rule. We see some names familiar to us from our studies of Torah and its related apocrypha. However, other names appear unique to this myth and do not recur in any of the other documents describing Gnostic beliefs, even from the same era. This implies that the presence descends from first a realm of seven cameo talismans and seven archangel sigils at Saluth, to next a realm of seven gematria number squares and twelve aeons, yet Syrah, to a realm of seven powers and twelve archons, Bariah, before being expressed in the modern terms of astrology, Asaya, the seven planets and twelve signs. The reason the Gnostics of his era continued to err by substituting the twelve archons and their seven powers for the twelve aeons and seven number squares, rather than skipping ahead to our own format of astrological application, as he would have predicted, and thus causing the intervention of Christianity's seven churches under twelve apostles, is no mistake on the part of the historical person of Jesus called the Christ. As we shall see next, Gnostic Christian pseudepigrapha, New Testament Gospels era apocrypha, records Jesus Christ as describing a very complex form of Hakabalah. However, nevertheless, the Gnostics passed on their twelve archons over seven powers as the twelve apostles over seven churches as a simple system based on the twelve signs of the Babylonian zodiac and the seven visible planets 
when in fact nowhere did Christ describe anything of the sort in any of the writings recording his spoken words. Thus, by the time of modern application to this system of twelve star signs and seven planetary rulers, of the practice of assigning Hebrew and Greek letters to these as well, which could not have originated before modern Hebrew and Greek alphabets replaced Aramaic and Coptic around 2,000 years ago, we have before our eyes now a system that shows a seven-point heptagram within a circle divided into twelve sections. Each of the twelve sections of the divided circle have a letter pair in green, signifying consonants from the Greek alphabet and a letter from the Hebrew alphabet in blue, in addition to a sign from the Babylonian zodiac in red, and each of the seven sections of the divided heptagram within the circle have one of the seven Greek vowels, green, and a letter from the Hebrew alphabet, blue, in addition to the seven visible planetary glyphs, red. In the next section, on Christian Gnostic concepts taught by Jesus himself, according to the New Testament era pseudepigrapha, we will address why we see the heptagram within the circular motif symbolizing the seven churches and twelve apostles, rather than, as we should see, the motif of the five horizontal and three vertical divisions between the seven planets ruling within the twelve zodiac sign circle. The heptagram model has been used by Christians from the time of St. John of Patmos through the life of early 16th century Kabbalist John D., who expressed it as the Sigillum Dei Meth, to the early 20th century Kabbalist Aleister Crowley, who called it the Star of Babylon. This motif, with the labels of the seven Greek vowels in green, seven planetary metals and seven oriental chakras in black, the seven planets in red and seven Hebrew letters in blue, as upon five horizontal and two vertical divisions inside a circle with the labels of Greek, green, signs of the zodiac, red, and Hebrew, blue, we will not return to again. However, this model, with the calibration corrected to year zero, being at the exact nadir of the zodiac circle of aeons in solar precession, should not be underestimated in importance when considering this model was that known to Pythagoras. The Gnostics, Part 1c As discussed in the first lecture on Kabbalah, when the chisel of pure light broke the vessels of lesser light, then the hand of God descended into the cosmos of Isaiah to manifest himself as Adam Cadman, the cosmic template of mankind. When this happened, the realm of Bariah, embodied as the Bereshit Beth cosmology of the Zohar, which had been below, adjacent to Isaiah, the lowest realm of the four worlds of Kabbalah, and the realm of Yetzirah, which had been above, embodied as the thirty-two paths of wisdom from the Sephiroth Syrah, switched places. Before the fall, Bariah was below and yet Syrah was above. In this model, Isaiah was the realm of the cosmos created in seven vast spans of time called cosmic days. Bariah was the Garden of Eden, yet Syrah was the Tree of Life, and beyond this was the realm of Atsaluth comprised of Ayin, Ayin Sof, and Ayin Sof Or. After the fall, Bariah and Yetzirah switched places. Bariah had been below, and the Garden of Eden was a real paradise adjacent to the origin of our own cosmos. Yetzirah had been above and the tree of life had been available at the center of the Garden of Eden and Bariah to anyone in the cosmos of Isaiah who ventured back toward the first day of our cosmos creation. After the fall, Bariah was elevated out of reach from Messiah, and yet Syrah descended to stand between mankind and the Garden of Paradise in the form of a seraphim, or lightning bolt, brazen serpent angel with a fiery sword. 
In this model, as each moment passes, the entirety of humanity is propelled further and further away from their origin point as a thought in the mind of God beyond the limit of Ain and outer Atsaluth. Although this cosmological model is based on the Zohar, which can be dated to no earlier than 1st century A.D. Sinai Rabbi Simeon Bar Yochai, it is here where our quest for the origins of Christian Gnostic thought begins to take form from the words of Christ. In this model, based on depictions compiled from the Pistis Sophia, also called Eunostus the Blessed, the Christ himself is recorded as relating the names and the relationships expressed by this model. Here we see an upright zodiac, vertical line on the left, of twelve traits, horizontal dashes, describes the body of Ima as she rises through the three descents, circles along the left side line of Abba, across the four realms on the right. The lowest descent is as the word, above this, the will, above this, mind. Christ himself said he had manifested as Pigera Adamas, another term for Adam Cadman, and appeared to Adam and Eve in the garden to judge them for their sin. He described that he had a twin brother who was called a child born from Sophia, the Shekinah, or Bride of God, whom Christ called the Autogenes. This twin was the Gnostic Demiurge, or evil creator of all, called Samael, meaning the blind, and was the spirit of Satan whom had possessed the accursed serpent, and whom, as such, had bred with Eve. According to the Christ in Pistis Sophia, Eve and Samael bear two offspring, one was called yad heh the Tetragrammaton name of God. The other was called Elohim, the contemporary substitution in scribal colophons for Adonai, an earlier title of God pre-Babylonian captivity. yad heh was the God of all good, and Elohim the devil of all evils. According to various legends of the Jews collected from oral traditions by Louis Ginsburg in the 19th century, as well as provided in Hebrew manuscript and English translation both by Steve Savidow, late 20th century Kabbalist, there is a book available to this day that originated as a grimoire or book of magic, proto-science, given to Adam immediately after his and Eve's expulsion from the Garden of Eden by an angel, described as an Ethiopian in some sources, named Raziel. Supposedly, the book of Raziel described all the visions Adam had once seen while in paradise, but which he would now never see again following the expulsion. This model shows us the combination of several Gnostic apocryphal sources' descriptions to relate them all into one larger model containing them all. In the central portion of the Gnostic model for the events following the expulsion is this tetractus of ten characters within three sectors or zones. In Eden above are Christ as Pigera Adamas or Adam Cadman, immortal Eve, and the demiurge twin of Christ called Yaldabaoth, meaning the blind. Immortal Eve and Yaldabaoth came together to conceive Cain as immortal and wise. But Cain dwelt in purgatory and was torn between the twin-headed spirits of yad heh and Elohim, good and evil, and who eventually succumbed to sin when he himself killed his brother Abel, whom immortal Eve had conceived with Pigera Adamas, Christ. Abel had occupied all three realms, living in Eden with Adam and Eve, in the mortal realm with Seth and the fallen Adam and Eve, and finally dying at the hands of his brother Cain in purgatory. Because Cain and 